Hey gang, so um, today I have some options for you. So if you've been doing the same workout for kind of four or six weeks, your body really gets used to to what is expected of it. It's kind of like if I was, I'm trying to learn French, so if I just repeated the same sentences over and over, I'm really not going to, over time, get better at French. I'm going to get good at, at those few sentences, but I'm not going to really be fluent. So let's make your body a little more fluent in some different movement patterns. Here's what I got for you today. You know I love split squats. I think they're a great exercise. I'm not saying you shouldn't do them, but if you've been doing them for a while, here are a couple of exercises that are going to challenge um, your dynamic stability a little bit more um, and then get you moving in the frontal plane. So not always straight forward and back, I'll add a little bit of side to side. The dumbbell squat lateral is a bit of a go-to. So we start with our hips or our feet about double to triple hip width. And then we're going to just squat to the side. So keeping our chest up reaching back with our hip and coming into a position where our shoulders, hips, knees, and ankle are stacked. So if I'm here, my shoulders are inside my foot and my knee, my stance is a little too wide. If I'm here and my hips are outside, my stance is a little bit too narrow. Let me just emphasize a bit about reaching back with your rear end. So you're coming back that way. So the weight is towards my heel on my front foot and I'm keeping my torso in a nice neutral position. So you'll see that it tilts forward a little bit as I sit back. That's okay, it has to, otherwise I'm going to tip over backwards, but I don't want to be rounding over and dropping my chest. When you do a reverse lunge, really the setup is the same as a split squat or a forward lunge. You're going to start with your feet hip width apart and keep them hip width apart as you step back. So resist the temptation to kind of step back behind you in this specific exercise. You're going to drop straight back and then bend your front knee and your back knee, chest up, driving up over this front leg. So you're using the glute on the front leg to pull you up and over that foot, as opposed to trying to push off the back leg. Notice how this knee stays pointing nice and straight ahead. When we look from the side, you'll see that I step back so that this thigh is in line with my torso, my front knee is bent to 90, and my chest is up nice and tall. Now, if this is a little bit creaky on your knees, I know some of your knees are getting a little tired, then don't go down all the way. So just start here, a little halfway, back up. Get your balance, a little dip, and then back up. I hold the dumbbells just at my sides. Um, you don't need to hold them here. That's just going to tire out your shoulders. Let's spice up your push-ups a little bit, challenge your torso, challenge your shoulder stability a little bit more. Try this variation. For the push-up to reach, I use one of these little glider discs, um, but it's not essential. So I have turf and a hardwood floor in the Revolution Gym, so I could just use a towel on the hardwood floor. If I just had all turf or your gym is all carpeted, um, you put your hand on an upside down frisbee or a plastic shopping bag, just anything that's gonna give you a little bit of a slide. This is a tough exercise, so start um, slowly, start with a small range of motion, because it's pretty easy to think like, oh yeah, I know what to do, and then really get yourself overstretched and even potentially hurt yourself. So you're gonna come into your nice push-up position. Your feet will be a little bit wider than normal. As you come down, you're gonna reach out with that glider and you have to actually put some pressure down into the floor to help pull it back up but really most of the load is going to be on this arm that's doing just the push-up. Dumbbell row is a great way to build upper body strength. You can really really load it up but let's look at a little bit more challenging version that again works you in multiple planes not just straight forward. Your single arm row and rotate so you're going to row, open up, really reach to the floor Rotate back, row up. So not swinging out of the bottom. Pulling yourself out of the bottom. And when you get to the top, really bring that elbow back, really reach with this hand, almost like you're trying to touch the attachment point. 
once you've mastered the plank, there are lots of ways we can make that one harder. Um, again, we're moving a little bit more dynamic. These two exercises use a stability ball, so a lot of you can probably even do them at home. Uh, check them out and make sure that you're really keeping a stable torso. That's the key. Stability ball stir the pot is one of the best core exercises I know. Um, so basically, we're just going to come into a plank position with our forearms on the ball. And then from here, we're going to stir the pot. We're going to make circles with our elbows, making them as big as we can without our body moving. So as we stir the pot, your shoulders shouldn't be rolling with the ball. It should all be stable and really just your elbows are moving. The rest of it's all working down in here. I think the stability ball knee tuck is a nice exercise for hockey players because it teaches you to do hip flexion without spinal flexion. So we're gonna put our feet on the ball, get in our push-up position. So as your knees come up, I don't want your low back rounding. I want your low back staying neutral and the work to just be taking place at the hips. So you're stabilizing with your torso, core stabilization, and you're working at your hips. So there are a few variations that you can add to your current workout routine just to spice it up a little bit, teach your body a little bit more um, vocabulary of movement and stabilization. This is Maria from HockeyTrainingPro.com. I'll catch up with you next time.